On Nationwide this evening, we're in Tipperary to meet people who are dedicated to the care of our four-legged friends. We hear stories of abandonment and of rehoming. And in Dublin, we meet staff and volunteers of the Little Flower Charity, which has been in operation for over 100 years. You're welcome to Nationwide. Well, the issue of unwanted or abandoned dogs really has become a problem in recent months, especially post lockdown. But there are many unsung heroes who continue to do huge work rehoming and rehabilitating such abandoned dogs. Paul's Rescue Centre in County Tipperary is a champion in the animal welfare world. And our reporter, Mary Fanning, went to Mullinahone to meet the team to find out about their work. Paws Rescue Centre started in County Kildare when the late Deirdre Hetherington and her daughter Gina set out on a mission to fill the gaps of cruelty and abandonment of dogs. They built up a reputation of excellence and specialised in the rehoming and rehabilitation mostly of greyhounds and nurtures but catered for all canines. It started in 1997 in Salins in County Kildare. I was actually uh, volunteering with another animal rescue and things weren't working out. And my mum had this big old rambling house with outbuildings and she said to me, why don't you start your own? And the two of us got together and we started Paws. And it just took off. Our, our original idea was to rehome unwanted pets from home and, and dog pounds but it just snowballed, it just took off. And we realized that at the time in 97, there was 35,000 dogs being destroyed in Ireland every year in the dog pounds. And when you think about it last year, I think there was less than a thousand or just over a thousand. So it's been a huge difference in the last oh, it's 20, 25 years, I think like this year. Gina and her late husband, Tom Malloy, moved to Tipperary in 2006. And a new chapter began at the centre in Mullinahone, but the welfare problems never abated. Over the years, Paws has evolved into uh, uh, mostly sight hounds, which is greyhounds and lurchers. I mean, at the moment, we've 93 dogs on site. Uh, 63 of them are greyhounds, and the rest are a mixture of lurchers and other breeds, bull breeds. We seem to generate towards the people, that, the dogs that nobody else wants. Um, not that people don't want them, but they've no success in rehoming them. So Paws has become known as that rescue to go to when nobody else will help. <laughs> um, and as a result, we, we have built up a rapport with uh, overseas groups. Um, we have Canada, USA, we have Germany, we have the Czech Republic are very good to us, the UK, and we get a, a homes for an awful lot, most of our sight hounds would be exported outside of Ireland to their new homes. The Irish public have been huge supporters of PAWS and those lucky enough to be rehomed in Ireland settled down with great success. These three fell on their PAWS when they were adopted by Magella Whelan in Clonmel. Magella, this is a scene any adoptee dog would die for. <laughs> well, they're very happy, Mary, you know, and they have uh, very few requirements, to be honest. It doesn't take much to please them. But um, they're pretty chilled out and relaxed. And once they have a couch and a fire, that's it. They're happy out. So who have we here? Well, this is Pinto. He's a Saluki hound. Um, he's from Paws. Saluki hounds are the supermodels of the hound world, originated in Egypt. And then we have Seamus, who is also Seamus, a Paws Seamus dog. Seamus is on my knee. Seamus loves you already. Um, he's probably the biggest greyhound you could get. He's a big coursing greyhound. Well, failed coursing greyhound, we'll add. And Mr. Gibbs then is probably one of the smaller sized greyhounds that you'd get. And he came into Paws as well with his brother and his mother. So um, because I go to Paws every weekend, I suppose like everybody who volunteers in Paws, you end up with your own pack that you bring home with you <laughs> in dribs and drabs. The health and welfare of dogs is paramount and veterinary surgeon Sarah Mitchell from Clonmel has been administering treatment and working with Paws for over 17 years. So Sarah, who's this? This is Doris. Okay. So Doris has um, she's a bit of a lump, a lump down on here at the back. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Poor Doris. Some of those dogs that we see, and um, they come in in a very poor state. 
They've been, they have many injuries. Some of them have old injuries that were never treated. Some of them come in with underlying illness. Some of them come in with really poor skin, skin conditions. They can have severe mange. They can have severe skin infections. Um, some of them come in very undernourished. Um, and so our job is to diagnose um, and to treat any of the conditions that we can. And then PAWS is the rehabilitation centre that minds these dogs and brings them back to full health so that they can then be rehomed. Last year they, they sent a number of greyhounds to America, which it's hard to believe that their reach is, is that far. Um, and so that, is, that has been a huge help for PAWS because it's another source of, of homes that greyhounds can go to. The running costs of the rescue centre is huge and Gina and the team have raised a lot of funds and become quite the experts on Facebook and the support of the public has been fantastic. The overheads are huge, they're absolutely huge. You're, you're looking at close on half a million a year to run the operation here. We also have, uh, thankfully Red Mills have sponsored our dog food for the last three years and that's uh, saved us 15,000 a year, which is absolutely fantastic. We get a government grant of 45 grand every year, like all the other rescues that get grants, we're, we're lucky. We're up there with the bigger ones. But at the end of the day, it is the public that keep us open. Paws has 11 full-time and part-time staff. The day-to-day -day work is relentless and you really have to have a vocation to work in the rescue centre. It's 365 days a year and a full day on Christmas Day. Sarah Connolly has been with Gina since she was a child, starting when she was 13 and now she's operations manager. It's hard work and it's heartbreaking sometimes. It's absolutely heartbreaking, especially when you get dogs that have come in that are have been so abused. But it then on the flip side, you get to look after that dog and you get to see that dog grow in ways from being nervous or being skin and bone. And you get to see the other side of it then as well when they're happy and healthy and in their new homes. It just makes it all worthwhile. The facility at Mulnahone is now 16 years old and upgrades are needed. We're really looking to upgrade our heating system here at the moment, um, just to get the kennels that little bit warmer, especially in the winter time. Um, but we're also really looking for like an indoor area that we could exercise the dogs, especially in the winter time, because the old boys like Panzer, um, they, they, they really feel the cold. So it'd be great if we had something indoors, um, and especially when people are coming to view the dogs. Sarah is very proud of her own rescue dogs. So this is Panzer. Panzer was actually born here in 2012. We got his mammy in and she was pregnant. Um, she was only a baby herself. Um, and she had 12, but unfortunately only three survived. Um, and he's my best man, ain't he, Panzy? And he'll never, ever be without a greyhound. Um, and then this is my little fudgy. <laughs> a little fudgy came to us as well um, with his siblings. So we had fudge, licorice and toffee. And Liquors and Toffee were rehomed in the UK, actually, and Fudge stayed with me. Covid has exemplified cases of whimsical ownership. Puppies were great in the lockdown, but surrendered in many cases when the owners returned to work. And that's having consequences for welfare all over the country. But Gina and the team and many other dog rescue centres are filling the gaps. As veterinary surgeons, what we saw is that a number of people got puppies um, during Covid. Um, and so for those people, when they went back to work, um, the puppies became teenage puppies or teenage dogs. And these dogs are really, you know, they need the time. A lot of these dogs, because people were working from home, became really accustomed to owners being at home. And so those dogs, as soon as people went back to work, were lonely. And when your dogs are lonely, then they'll misbehave. And so it became too much for owners. And so certainly, Though some of those dogs have been sur surrendered and people have come looking to see if they can get them rehomed. Gina has made many personal sacrifices on her journey with Paws and she was dealt a cruel blow when her beloved husband Tom passed away. Tom passed away in 2012. He got a very rare form of cancer which uh, the oncologist said he hadn't seen in Ireland for 25 years and he was just bloody unlucky. 
is, is what he said, what the, the, the doctor said. And uh, he fought it for two years, but unfortunately it, it took him in the end. And he was a very young man, he was only 48. It would always be a gap. I mean, as, like all married couples, we had our moments. But um, no, it's, it's, it's great to have somebody to, to bounce off your ideas off and, and to sympathise with you when things go belly up as well, because nothing has been perfect over the years. Like, it's always been a challenge, 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 challenge. And like, the stress didn't help us as a couple really either, because I was stressed and me being stressed made him stressed. And it kind of, you know, it, it's, but, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, when, when you lose your soulmate, th there's nothing that can replace it, really. You did not desert me, my brothers and all. Pause is now entering a new stage of development and the team is on a mission to fundraise to extend. Gina Hetherington has dedicated 25 years of her life to the care of unwanted dogs and she shows no signs of slowing down. I will never retire. I mean, till the day I die, I'll be doing this. You know, it's, it's, it was what my mother intended too, but unfortunately illness overtook that. And like, as long as I can function, I will do paws. And I'm still known as Mrs. Paws. Everybody calls me Mrs. Paws. And I love it. It's, it's great to see animals coming in, in, well, not great to see them coming in, but when they come in in a very bad state or with fear or with injuries, and then you see them going out the other end and they're happy and they're bouncing around. And then you get photographs back from families with them lying on the couch with their legs in the air. And it's just, it's so satisfying, this job. Absolutely no regrets. Uh, if I had to do it all again, I would do it all again. It's, there's something about the way that a, a rescue dog knows it's been rescued. There's something about the, the way that they look at you when you've tended their wounds, when you've looked after their injuries. And when a dog walks out of here to a new home, I mean, there's no feeling in the world like it. And if you're interested in finding out more about the work of Paws, go to their website. Well, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're in Dublin to find out about the Little Flower Charity. We'll see you shortly. <laughs>